And wherever you're tuning in from around the world, a really warm welcome from all of us here at Antioch, Sydney, particularly Pastor Grace and myself. And it's great to have you with us tonight. We just hope that the Word of God ministers to you. And again, we'll continue to worship a little later if the time permits as well. God is good. Amen. God is good. Well, if you've got your Bible, let's turn to Isaiah chapter 10. And uh, I love the book of Isaiah, but I'm going to read from the, ver- from the New King James Version. I'm reading verse 27. Uh, Before we do that, let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, as we open up your word tonight, I ask that you will inspire us, enlighten us, and enlarge our mindset, our understanding, and our concept, and and deep in our heart, just really, really, truly do a good work tonight in Jesus' name. That's what you do. We know you are working in us, your power and your glory, and you are completing the very thing that you began. So we bless you in this moment. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Verse 27, Isaiah chapter 10. It shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and this and his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. If you've been around at church for a while, you've heard that verse preached before because I love it. You know, there's power in the anointing, particularly in this verse. It's talking about the anointing oil. There's a a concoction of oil that the Old Testament sort of declares to us. We don't know the exact constitution or the percentages of what goes in there, but we definitely know um, that the anointing oil that God ordains is a very, very powerful instrument. And in the New Testament, we live under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. How many can say amen and hallelujah to that? We are living in the new covenant grace where that Holy Spirit anointing is available to us, where we can live in the breakthrough, where this verse doesn't need to be that moment when some man of God or woman of God comes and anoints us with physical oil, but we are living under the anointing oil of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. And so no matter what yoke or burden is on our life, and I know there are many struggles that many of us are facing in this season, in this period, we can know one thing for sure, that that anointing breaks yokes. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be able to talk about this tonight. You know, I, I, I was thinking and praying, Pastor Grace and I, we had a bit of a conversation what to share tonight. And we've had to make some quick adjustments given the uh, unfolding scenarios and circumstances going around. And some things kind of threw out on the table. And as I thought about it and as I, I, um, I just spent some time meditating, I, 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 I realized, you know, I believe there are many in our community that are just longing for a fresh touch and a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit. You're you're longing for a fresh outpouring of what God can do. Can I get an amen to that? If that's you, put something in the chat room there. We'd love to know it because there's nothing like the presence of God. This is a, a church. You're part of a church which just loves the presence of God. We love hanging out in the midst of God moving and the presence of God and the visitation and God just pouring out His grace. We've seen so many miracles over the years. We've enjoyed the beauty of hanging out in that throne room of our almighty God and Savior. And so we're longing for it. I mean, this lockdown has been a long time, right? It kind of feels like these restrictions and, and then social distancing and isolation and, and, and whatnot, all the bits and pieces. And it kind of gets to you in the end. You're like, my oh God, I need a fresh touch. Well, I want to encourage you today that you don't need to be sitting there thinking like that because a fresh touch And a fresh anointing is available to all of us anytime. It can happen right now, right here. It can happen tomorrow. It can happen outside of a church service. In fact, God is longing to touch you and I. And so we're going to talk about this tonight. And I've titled this message, A Fresh Anointing or The Receiving That Fresh Anointing. And we're going to talk about the presence of God. But let's read this scripture in Isaiah 40 verse 31. You know this one as well. It says, But those who wait upon God get fresh strength. Say it out loud with me. Fresh strength. They spread their wings and soar like eagles. They run and don't get tired. They walk and don't lag behind. Message translation here. I love that. You know, those who wait on God, those who wait on His presence, this is not talking about inner person-to-person church service. It's talking about a heart attitude, a posture, a position. Those who wait upon God get fresh strength. There's a receiving or there's an impartation. There's an anointing that flows out over our life. I know one thing is true in the scriptures that God never promised to us that he would take away all our problems. 
He never told us that we'd never have anything we've got to go through, that we'd never go through valleys and we'd never go through struggles and never go through trials. But one thing he did promise is that when we do go through those things, if we wait on him, we will get fresh strength, new strength. In other words, there's a fresh anointing, a fresh impartation, a release from the hand from the throne room of God to empower us to get up and do it again and again and again and again. And you don't need to get tired or weary. I know we'll all have tired and weary moments. I can tell you I could list dozens of them. I could sit here and complain all night if I wanted to about times and seasons where I've been down in the dumps and I've had the struggles and I've had a burden on my shoulder and it's felt like I couldn't go on. It's felt like doing another day is just hard work. And I've rested in the Lord in those moments because that's what we do as Christians. As children of God, we learn that God, I can't do this in my own. You said not by might, not by power, not by strength, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So I am leaning on a fresh anointing. It's amazing powerful the way God can do it in the midnight hour uh, when you dream in the middle of the night it could be through somebody's voice it could be just just in the sense of stillness in the presence of God and suddenly maybe not so suddenly maybe it's not a specific moment or time that you can realize but a fresh anointing a fresh strength a fresh power fills us from the inside out and I love that and that's what I want to talk to you about tonight so so really truly um it's, it's powerful. The anointing is, is powerful. If you've never experienced the anointing of God, stretch out your hands toward the heavens right now because I'm praying, Lord, in the name of Jesus as we talk about this beautiful topic of meeting with you, of the presence of God, of the visitation of God and that fresh anointing that flows out over our life that even across digital airwaves, whether it's being watched live or as a replay, I declare in the name of Jesus that there is a fresh wind of the Holy Spirit flowing into our community, flowing into every tuned in viewer, every person who's listening to the sound of my voice, that there is an anointing from the Most High that's bringing strength and peace and grace and healing and every good gift and perfect gift that comes from the Father of lights above. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If I look back at my life, church, I can kind of paint a picture of moments. And I grew up in the church. I had the privilege of meeting with God um, in Sunday school at a very young age. I turned my back on God through my teenage years, but I met God again. And and it's just amazing from the time and the times of watching through my life. If I track back, I remember moments and times and, and seconds and seasons. And I remember it because in the midst of all the stuff that's gone on in my life, it's the God moments and those God defined seasons that really mark the story of my life that mark the story of where God's taken me and where God is taking me. And I know that the same is true for you. You can think back over your own life and it's easy to forget it. You know, the scripture talks about remembering these things. Remember what God's done for you. Don't forget the days when God did these things in the old. Doesn't mean to reminisce in them. Doesn't mean to make memorials about them or long to go back to the old ways, the old places and old times. But in the remembrance of what God has done for us is something so powerful that's irreplaceable it's every single one of those moments when God touched our lives when God spoke to us through his word when God uh, made his presence and his peace more real than we ever knew it never felt it before when divine appointments and divine opportunities came our way it was those moments when God moved with fresh wind and fresh anointing that deposited something onto our life you wouldn't be who you are and I wouldn't be who I am without those moments Saul experienced that moment on the road to Damascus. It wasn't the only moment he met with God. It was the first of many moments. And I believe and I trust and I've experienced a God who just longs to be close to us. And he wants to keep pouring out those divine moments again and again and again. But what happens in every one of those moments is that a deposit of his anointing takes place. It's, it's powerful. And I, I'm blessed in the days and years, I guess these previous seasons of church and even through this lockdown period, being able to watch with my own eyes as the anointing of what God is pouring through my ministry, Grace's ministry, this church's ministry, the ministry of the leaders of this church, every life group and and beyond. And, you know, even 
you might say, well, I'm a, I, I don't have a name or a title or a position in this church, but even watching your life and the anointing that is moving on your life is inspiring and encouraging me. You are rising up. You are not going to be defeated. You are not held back and not held down. This is an overcoming season. And that's the anointing that God is pouring out, a fresh anointing. Again and again and again, it's being poured out over our life. Yep, we're about to step into a new church-wide, church branch network, synod-wide um, topic or theme. Most of you know what it is already. I'm not going to say it in public here just in case I'm, I'm not allowed to. But it's going to be powerful and we're about to step into something new but that doesn't mean overcoming ended because that anointing's already been deposited in you and i and we are overcomers for life because of that anointing because of the grace and the power that god bore on the cross and continues to pour out through his blood and through his resurrection i love it watching it is just beautiful but i believe god wants to pour out more and more and more in every worship session, as we reach out and lift up our hearts to the heavens, there's a new anointing. Every time we sit around here and we read our Bible, whether it's in the morning or the evening, there's a new deposit of the anointing of God. There's fresh grace being poured out. There's fresh anointing, fresh oil. I've loved watching the creative trio over this season. Every day, not a day goes past when we don't read a testimony about someone that their ministry is touched. And that's your ministry too, by the way. Because your prayers and the support you get behind them, you're, you are sowing into a, a seed, into a, uh, sowing seed into a, a ministry that is impacting and having fruit, bearing fruit around the world. I mean, I'm reading stories of teenagers that are coming to Jesus Christ. I'm reading stories of people who have put aside secular music and have decided they're going to devote themselves to Christian music because of what the trio have done. It's not that they watch the trio themselves, but they've just inspired a, that there's a fresh anointing. There's something that's been poured out even digitally to another part of the world that is changing and challenging the status quo. I read a story this week about a woman who has lost a loved one in her life and she just, she reached out and she, she met the trio. Somehow, you know, God brought them into her life and she said, look, this has supported me through this season. I have felt the wind and the, the joy and the glory of the Lord that has strengthened me through this hard time. I don't know what, where I would be or what my life would be without this ministry. Have a think about that. How does that happen? The anointing of God moves. And the anointing of God fills us every day as we sow our seed and sow our life into the things of the kingdom of God. Um, it, it's, it's, it's beautiful. I love it. I love it. You and I are called in God. We're anointed by God, but we need fresh anointings. And tonight I'm trusting that my God will do it for you just as he continues to do it for me. Let's read this scripture in Psalm 92 verse 10. I, um, I love the Psalms, but David writes here in Psalm, or Moses I think it is actually in, in Psalm 92. He writes, uh, My horn you have exalted like a wild ox. I have been anointed with fresh oil. Everybody say fresh oil. There's fresh oil available. Fresh oil for tonight. Fresh oil for today. You say, but it's lockdown pastime. I'm watching online. We're doing on online church here. Hey, nothing, limit, nothing limited your God. Nothing holds your God bound or, or, or trapped. The scriptures say that the word of God is not chained. You cannot chain God's word. It's powerful. It's anointed. Whether you're doing it alone and connecting in in a community like this and chatting in that chat room and church is online because we have to or whether we're in person there's still fresh oil available hallelujah so get ready for it but here's the word i want to pull out of this the, the word anoint or the word anointing literally means this the smearing or rubbing of oil upon an individual as um as an example of what anointing might mean you imagine a patient going to a doctor and the physician asks well what's wrong with you he says well i've got a sore back i need i need something to you know to settle there the doctor goes and takes some massage oil gets it all over their hands and then gets in there and starts massaging out the crooks and you know all the crack cracks and all the bits and pieces and dealing with those muscles and all the bits and pieces until that patient is completely well and in the midst of that process, all the oil is being massaged into that patient's body um, as part of what we call anointing. That word anointing in the Greek text, in the Hebrew text, 
literally has this meaning, this connotation of from one man's or one woman's hands to another's. The smearing or rubbing on onto another. So in other words, when we think about this word anointing, we can't just think about the oil of the anointing. We have to think about the hands of the anointer. The great anointer, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, is an incredibly powerful anointer. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute, but his hands are reaching out to yours tonight, just like he's reaching out to mine, and he is anointing us with fresh oil. Amen to that. Come on. It's so good. The, um, the joy of this particular concept is that oil is a very expensive commodity. It's always been an expensive commodity. Oils like frankincense and myrrh, um, cassia, hyssop, some of the Old Testament things, Rose of Sharon, they are incredibly expensive commodities. And the reason is simple. They take time, effort, energy, and processes to extract those oils from the botanical. And so even in the Old Testament days when they anointed people with oil, there were some processes of how they did it. It was rare that they would literally take the bottle and just pour it over someone from the top of their head to the soles of their feet because that would have been you know, a very, very, very expensive exercise. Most of the time, what happened was the person doing the anointing would take the anointing oil and they would pour it onto their hands and they would get a whole lot of it all over themselves and then they would begin to lay their hands on that person and rub it in. Anoint that person. Anoint them on their head, anoint them onto their back or chest. I'm sure it was always appropriate. Um, you know, that's the way our God works, right? But the, the power of anointing as a word is that it is the smearing on or the pouring on and then the rubbing in of this oil into someone or the, the, the recipient of that anointing. And I believe that there's a powerful principle for us as Christians in this, that when we get under the hands of our master and we allow the hands of the Father to reach out to us and to begin to massage the anointing oil into our life, which we're going to talk about in a moment, that there's some, some powerful stuff that happens. Our lives are transformed, changed, maybe even turned upside down by the power of what God does. So when God anoints us, okay, we can call it a hands-on situation, literally. Um, God literally takes in His hands the Holy Spirit and the works of the Holy Spirit, all of the nature and the heartbeat of God, the fullness of who He is, and He begins to press in, a, in a, an anointing, in a massaging kind of situation, press Himself onto the inside of you and I. That's why we need the anointing church. We need to sit under His hands and say, Lord, fill me up. Fill me with your glory. Fill me with your peace. Fill me with your presence. All I want is you. That's also why you understand that when, when, when we say that person is anointed by God, you've heard that statement, surely. That person is anointed by God means that we can sense something on their life because something's been rubbed into them. The hands of God have gone to work upon their life and have, have rubbed, them in, rubbed something into their life that wouldn't be there otherwise. It's another reason why we would say the hand of the Lord is on that person. We can see that. We know that. We recognize it. There's something about that person. God's hands are upon them. Yeah, because that's what anointing is. It's God's hands that are moving upon our life that are literally um, you know, bringing to part, bringing to pass, bringing into place, into position in our world the fullness of the goodness of God. There's a strong sense of the presence of God on someone's life. Well, we can sense that. We know that every time they sing or minister, oh my gosh, there's the presence of God. Every time they speak or they, they share something, there He is again. It's like they walked into the room. Oh, there's the atmosphere again. We sense the presence of God because that's the power of anointing. And every time that we experience God's presence and anointing, a little more gets rubbed in. It's so good. And I want to encourage you, keep having those moments, 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 moments. This is not for way back then on the day you got saved, church. The day you got saved might have been the first encounter with God, but it's going to be the first of many because there's always a fresh anointing, a fresh touch of the Holy One that's going to fill our life. And so I, I, I sort of thought about this and what I was going to share tonight because I really feel that there is a deep longing, a really deep longing in this church. God we miss the presence of God moving like 
you know, like, like in those days when in person we could just lay hands and minister and do all those kind of things. And God hasn't gone anywhere, church. He hasn't. But sometimes our expectations are that we receive the anointing through a human laying their hands on us. And yet God is right here saying, I am the anointer of all anointers. I'm the one who formed and fashioned the heavens and the earth. And my hands are still mighty to save, are still powerful and glorious, are still working in your midst. There's a beautiful song. It says, you're the way maker, the miracle worker, the promise keeper. He hasn't changed, church. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He's still available, still at work. Oh my gosh, it's so good. If we can only understand how to sit under the Master's hands, the anointing, that fresh anointing, is still available anytime, anywhere. Now don't get me wrong. There's a moment in time when God wants to move, and He will move through the church, and only in the church, because He's ordained certain things for certain places and certain times and certain seasons. And so we can't neglect that. There's a time and a place. But in moments like we're in right now, in a lockdown, where we cannot gather in person because of government restrictions and whatnot, we have no option. And so God is our only hope, and He is our only option. So we're going to reach out our hearts and our hands toward Him. We're going to say, Lord, fill me up. So can we do that? Just put your hands where you are, wherever you are. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, put your hands upon me and fill me up. Fill me up with fresh anointing. Fill me up with fresh oil, Lord. Start massaging like that analogy we just talked about a little earlier. Fill me up with fresh oil, fresh anointing, fresh glory, fresh touch, a fresh impartation. Lord, whether I feel it or whether I don't, I know every time I come into your presence, and every time I gather around your word and every time that my spirit is ministered to, that there is an anointing that is being imparted over my life and it is filling me up. It's strengthening me. It's encouraging me. It's enlarging me. It's taking me to new heights of grace and breakthrough and the peace and the anointing of the Lord will never leave my life in Jesus name. And somebody said, Amen. Amen. You see, we got to get really good at this. Really, really good at this. Um, I know there's a longing in our church that I want more. Give me more, Lord. I need more. And that's great. God loves that. He wants that. He is longing to see our hearts hungry and passionate and thirsty. God, fill me up. All I want is you. And, um, and so I want to encourage you. Don't stop. Don't neglect those moments. Your greatest days haven't come yet. They're on the way. And for your greatest days, you're going to need a greater anointing because greater challenges and greater struggles and greater stuff we got to go through requires a new strength and a new anointing to go through it. So we need the power of God. So I want to give you three key takeaway points tonight in how to position ourselves for that anointing to fill our life. Fresh wind, fresh anointing, fresh oil. Amen. You ready for this? Here's the first one. Number one, get into the presence of the great anointer. Get into the presence of of the great anointer. You ain't going to get no anointing if you're not in the presence of the anointer. I mean, it's amazing how many people can walk past the church and not experience what's going on inside of the church because you've got to be inside the church to experience what's going on inside the church. So true, right? Sometimes we like to think that, well, I'm a Christian. I'm, I'm serving God. I can just go through my life and do whatever I want to do. And God is omnipresent. He'll just, he'll do what he does. But the truth is Moses' burning bush was a specific burning bush. Just like Paul's specific point or Saul's specific point on the road to Damascus was a specific point. We need to get ourselves into the place of his presence. Presence is important, very important. Paul said this to the church in Rome, Romans chapter 1 verse 11, For I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. Why couldn't Paul impart that gift through prayer? Why couldn't it happen from a distance geographically? Why did he have to see them face to face? It didn't matter where he saw them, whether it was in Rome or in any other city. He said, I want to see you. I want to have that face to face moment and encounter because I long to impart something to you. I want to release something into your life. It's not because of a lack of words. You can write words on a letter and impart it. Um, obviously, in those days, they didn't have the privilege of 
internet and WhatsApp and Facebook and Instagram and all these global social media sharing platforms. They couldn't, couldn't share it electronically, so they couldn't hear his voice. They didn't have tape recorders or CD recorders or anything like that. Uh, but, but words are shared through letters. You can write them on a paper. Paul did many of, of, the, of them in the letters. And yet he says, there's something that I have that I can't give you until you and I meet together in one place, until there is a sense of community in the presence, one with another. I believe that the reason why God created things like this is because there's a proof in our connection between our desire and our will to do. There, there's no lack of desire amongst Christians to meet God, to know God. I mean, you go anywhere in any circle around Christian people and ask them, do you want to know God? They're going to say, yeah, of course, for sure. Would you love to meet with God? Yeah, of course. I really want it. The desire is there amongst us because our spirit is filled with eternity and our spirit longs to meet with God. But when it comes to doing the act, if you like, of meeting with God and discovering God, well, there's, therein lies the, um, the stumbling block that a lot of us don't want to take the time, the effort, and the energy to actually pay the price to devote the time and the effort and, and all our, you know, our mental energy and whatnot to actually draw near to God. We don't take our tea and our coffee and sit down around the Word and just dig into it and study it. That's why he said, study this Word, meditate on it, day and night, meditate on it. Therein will your way become prosperous and of good success. It takes effort as a Christian to position ourselves in the places of the presence of God. Yeah, there are times and moments as we're going to see when God will just show up even though we weren't looking for it or even hoping for it or desiring for it. But far and away, God is looking at our heart saying, Child, do you really want me? I'm not going to be throwing my pearls in front of the swine. I'm not going to be giving away the best of the best of the best until it's right, until the time is right, until you're ready for it. And the readiness is often found in our pursuit in our passionate pursuit of the things of God, how hungry we are for them, how desiring we are for them. So Paul says, come on, let's meet in this place. It's not that God can't or won't do it from a distance. He proved in the scriptures that he can do it from the distance. Think about that centurion in Matthew chapter 8. The centurion came up to him. He says, oh, you know, I've got this, this person needs to be healed in my home. And Jesus is like, oh, great, I'm coming home with you. And he says, no, 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 no. Just speak the word. Just speak the word. And I know my servant will be healed. And Jesus goes, wow, I haven't seen great faith like that. He says, go. And in that self same hour, the, the servant is healed. Now think about that. Yeah, God can heal. God can touch. God can anoint from a distance. But often he chooses to do it in his presence for the people who long come to his presence. Think about that centurion. The centurion ran into the presence of God. The centurion wasn't sitting at home going, oh, you know that Jesus out there on the road? I, I know he could heal my servant. Maybe I'll just sit here and wish that, that he'll do it or hope that he'll do it. No, the centurion got out on his two feet and he took probably a host of people from his home and he went all the way out there and he met with Jesus. He got into Jesus' presence. There was the miracle. There was the miracle. When we get into the presence of God, the miracle happens. And, and that anointing is released. That power gets released. It's beautiful what happens in the presence of God. No wonder Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, 28, Come to me. Why wouldn't Jesus come to us? Well, he has already come to us. He came on the cross. He sent us his Holy Spirit. He's given us the word of God. He's ha he has literally poured out everything that we need. And he is sitting there, but he's a gentleman. He's not going to force his way into our heart or force his way into our future. We need to accept him. That's why he says, I stand at the door and I knock. And if you hear that knocking like you're hearing it tonight, come on. Let's go closer to him. Let's draw near to his presence. Let's move our hearts into the place of receptivity that, Lord, nothing else matters. You're everything to me. You're all I want. You're all I need. Fill me up with a fresh new anointing. You see, when you got that stirring on the spirit on the inside, you aren't waiting for a worship leader to pump you up. You aren't waiting for a preacher to pump you up. You ain't waiting for your life group leader to call you and say, come to life group because you've got a stirring in the spirit on the inside because you got yourself moving in the spirit and moving in the presence of God. And the anointing is ripe and ready and fresh to move in your midst.
Hallelujah. So good. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This is not because God's too lazy to come to us. He's a gentleman. He really is. And so for the weary and the heavy laden, he has an anointing waiting. The anointing is rest. You see, when you come to the Lord, come into the presence of God, and you've got a big heavy pack on your back, and you're carrying the weight of your sin, and carrying the weight of a difficult week at work, and you've been criticized, and you're carrying a little bit of offense because you haven't thrown it away yet. You get into the presence of God, and there's an anointing. Bam! Rest. It's beautiful. For the, for the poor, you know, he says, let the weak say, I am strong, and the poor say, I am rich. There's a beautiful anointing that happens in the presence of God, a breakthrough. We think that we're poor because we don't have money in the bank. But I tell you, there's a richness in the Spirit of God that God will give you in the anointing of God that money can't buy. He says in Isaiah 55, anyone who thirsts, come to the table, come and buy food, come and eat this beautiful stuff, which, which you can't buy with money. It's available to you in the presence, in the anointing of God, but you've got to come to me. Think about that, church. When's the last time you really came to the feet of Jesus? I mean, I, I get it. You, you watch church online. You've, we've just sung a couple of songs and most of us didn't sing at the top of our voice. We didn't close our eyes. We didn't really worship because we, we're not attuned to that. We're used to sitting there and watching the screen and going, oh, okay, the worship leader did a good job tonight. That was a nice worship bracket. And we're, we're not thinking about God and entering in in those moments. And if you are one of the ones that really dedicates your heart and your life and your mind in every one of these online sessions to drawing near to God, I am praying right now God will honor you. I'm praying God will honor you. That you'll feel and sense the presence of God in a deeper and more incredible, more just real, just a touching way like never before because you've got a heart to jump into the presence of God. But so many of us in this lockdown period are like, you know, I'm just going to do church. And I will be sipping my tea and my coffee at the same time as I do church because uh, I've got, I can prepare my lunch, I can do my ironing at the same time. We, we've gotten used to trying to fit the spiritual things into our life like another box rather than revolving our whole world around the spiritual things. I was talking with my mechanic today. I went to take my car in for a service, for an essential service for the uh, registration, having a bit of a chat with him about it and he he kind of was telling me the same thing. Like in this period, it's anything spiritual. You know, the world just pushes the spiritual things aside. Christians can't afford to do that. We cannot afford to push spiritual things to the side. Our breakthrough, our anointing, our joy, our yokes being broken depend on whether we come into the presence of God full-heartedly or not. So don't miss it. Stretch into there. In Psalm 107 verse 9, it's clear that everything is available. Everything good is available in the presence of God. Anyone who comes to God needing and desiring something, it's available in the presence of God. Read this. Psalm 107 verse 9. For He, that's God, satisfies the longing soul and fills the hungry soul with goodness. If we come to God longing and hungry, we ain't going to go home empty. Our stomachs, spiritual stomachs that is, are going to be filled. Our mind, our soul, our emotions, our entire well-being is going to be filled because in the presence of the Lord there is, somebody finish the sentence for me, fullness of joy. In His right hand there are, come on, pleasures forevermore. Where do you find them? In the presence of God. Presence means a lot. Straight to the point here, the hungrier we are for the presence of God and the anointing, the more likely we are to be positioned when God is ready to pour it out, to get those two hands of His moving and start massaging it into our life. And it happens week after week. Every worship session, every encounter, every morning as you come around your devotion moment. When it comes to hunger and longing though, how many of us in this period have trained our character to be more longing for other things than spiritual things? I mean, you know it. You're thinking at the moment already in the middle of my preaching message. Okay, when this preacher's done here, I know which Amazon Prime video or Netflix video or Apple TV video I'm, I'm going to watch the next part of the season. You've got it all lined up because your brain is already thinking about what's next. When actually God says, child, just sit aside a little while. Just come into my presence a little longer. 
just linger, just wait, because if you got into that place where you're really truly hungry and longing for me, instead of satisfied and caught up with all the other worldly stuff, you might find that you actually get filled up. That's the fresh anointing. God's looking for our hearts, you see. He wants to find that connection, one-on-one, -on -one, personal moment. The hungrier we are for the Word of God, how hungry are we? You know, are we more hungry for this or are we more hungry for something else? Job said, I'm more hungry for this than even for my necessary food. You could put all the spread in front of me. I want this more than all of that. I mean, that was the passion that came out of Job's heart. Catch that. Get in the presence of God. Psalm 122 verse 1 says, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How do you feel about that? Especially in this moment, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us gather in a watch party. Let us get around the word of God. Let us hear Pastor Nick or Pastor Grace preach another message. Let us, let us worship, even though we don't hear the instruments and we, you know, we can't see the people live, but let us worship. Let us get into the place of God, the presence of God. I'm so glad to find that place. Are you feeling like that? That's how we position ourselves. Number one, how we position ourselves for the fresh oil, fresh anointing of God. Get into the presence of God. The second thing is open up your heart to be touched by God. Can we throw some comments in the chat room now and just encourage one another? Open up your heart. You could be in the middle of church and not have an open heart. I'll talk about that in a sec. But for the the opening of our heart is a big deal if we want the presence of God to move. You know, Moses was walking past the presence of God at that burning bush. But the very scripture that, that, that opens up his miracle is when it says in Exodus, I think it's Exodus 3, he turns aside and it's, he says, And Moses turned aside and walked toward the burning bush. He, he took some steps toward the burning bush. And that was when God met him, when God spoke to him. He opened up his heart to be touched to experience what God was trying to say. Without an open heart, you just walk straight past what God wants to do. We miss it completely. We can hear a preaching message and it just goes in one ear and out the other ear because we, we didn't open up our heart for what God wanted to do. And yet, in every spoken moment, in every worshipped song, there is an anointing that's being loosed. It doesn't matter about whether it's a professional grade singer. When that singer comes with the heartbeat to connect with God and to worship with all their spirit and in truth, my God, wait and see what God will do. Wait and see when you as a worshiper and that person as a worship leader just engage and connect into that moment. In Philippians 2.13, it says, For it is God who works in you both to will and to do for His good pleasure. God is working in us. That's an anointing. He's massaging, working in us to will and to do. You say, Pastor, I don't really feel like I want the presence of God. I don't feel at this moment. Yeah, maybe you've made some choices through this season, like many people have, to push spiritual things to the side, and now it feels like it's, it's lost momentum. It's hard to get back, hard to stretch back in. Well, if that's you, just remember this scripture. If you will position yourself with an open heart for God to work in you, He will. He will work in you to will, to desire, to want to do it, and to do. In other words, to give you the power to make it happen. That's anointing. You've just got to sit and wait under the hand of the, of the Lord because He is working in you. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We've just got to open up our hearts. Now I wonder, going back to the scriptures, if you open up your gospels, how many people that they, they hung around Jesus and they listened to Jesus' sermons and they watched Jesus' miracles, but they never themselves got touched deeply on the inside. Why is that? Well, if they didn't open up their heart, they could have come for the entertaining sermon because they were really great. I mean, they were amazing parables that Jesus told. They could have come from the buzz and the atmosphere of the crowds that, that Jesus had all around him. Maybe they came for the food that Jesus provided like he did that day when he multiplied five loaves and two fish. Or maybe it was a family member that had begged them to come along. Come along, see this man called the Messiah. And they just kind of come along. But it's... It's not until we open up our heart that God is able to really do anything meaningful on the inside of us. People who don't open up their heart, the stubborn, hard-hearted, proud people, they're untouchable. Who can change them? Who can deal with them? Even God himself sits back waiting. When are you ready? When are you going to make a change in this area of your life? 
so that you've got an open heart to receive what I want to pour out into your life. Some of us are hard-hearted because we think that the only way God can pour it out is the way we think He'll pour it out. Do you know some of the greatest anointings that I've received in my life and impartations I've received have come through human beings? My wife is a good example. We sit in bed sometimes and she'll be there and she'll be just nyup, nyup, nyupping, rebuking me about something. You shouldn't have said this like this. You should do this like that. You know, change this mentality, this mindset. And I'll do the same to her. And it could seem like an ordinary conversation. However, in the midst of that conversation, God's anointing is flowing and God is moving in our midst. And with an open heart that says, I'm not going to be proud and stubborn about that. I'm going to let God's word and let the truth of God's plan and purpose mold me and shape me on the inside. There's an anointing that flows and it changes us. But when you stand there stubborn, it's like, no, my way is the right way. I want it my way. The only way God can touch me is in the presence of God. At church, in person. When I hear that song, that song is that one that that really touches me and really blesses me. Some people got some really stubborn mindsets about how God will touch them and when God will touch them. In the Bible, God met in all kinds of ways. Through a donkey's mouth, He met them. He met them in, in a burning bush, like I've already said. In the sky, He met them. Through a pillar of fire and cloud by day, He met them. There were a, a, a number, quite a, a significant number of different ways that God met people through Urim and Thummim. Uh, it, the list goes on and on and on. It's, it's powerful when you open up your heart to say, Lord, whatever you want to do and however you want to do it, speak to me, minister to me, pour out fresh oil and anointing. I know there are a lot of people who come to church and they walk into the church building, but they never get really touched by God because they didn't open up their heart. They heard the preaching. They sang the same songs as someone else did. They met the same people that someone else did and they they were in the same service. And yet they completely missed the presence of God that was being poured out in that environment and that moment simply because didn't have a, an open heart. I want to encourage you, church. Open up your heart. Because tonight, even as we speak and as we preach, the Word of God is going forth and it doesn't return void. It's accomplishing. It is released to perform the word that it's sent forward for. And that's a work in your heart and in mine. Our minds and our hearts and our concept are being transformed in the presence of God. Fresh anointing in Jesus' name. Pour it out, Lord. Holy Spirit, move. Go again. Go again and keep pouring out more and more. Massage into your children the glory of what you want to do in this moment in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Here's another one. You know, we open up our Bible in the morning and we read our Bible and, and I guess most of us in this community that have been around here for a while, you know that Bible reading is a really important ritual or, or, or habit, a routine, tradition of, of our life, but it shouldn't be a habit or routine in our heart. It should be our joy, our absolute passion and desire and longing. But how many of us, when we read our Bible, it's like, well, you know, I just read, I read my three chapters today or my, my five chapters or my half an hour or whatever it is that you put aside, and you didn't really give your heart to it. So you walk away day after day after day, having done a lot of reading, but having not received a lot of fresh anointing. Do you know there's more power in one verse of this Bible than, than, than we could gain in a whole lifetime of just reading for knowledge or reading for, for education or to know the stories of the Old Testament? This word is anointed with power and life and light. And when you see it and when it opens up our eyes, when there's rhema that gets loosed over our life, more. Oh, It'll change us. And that fresh anointing goes to work. And from one to another, to another, to another, we can have moments with God every single day if we want. It's beautiful. So position yourself and open up your heart. When I think about building a church, you know, building a church requires a lot of skill. There's a lot of skills involved. Let's just talk about the worship team for a minute. To play a guitar or play a piano, I can't really do that. I can play very, very simple piano. Uh, but I'm not, not, a, not very good at all. I could, wouldn't, wouldn't pass the test by any stretch of the word to get up there on a church platform. And, um, and I know it takes skill. To learn an instrument requires skill. To sing well takes skill. But there's nothing like when you combine skill with anointing. When you take skill and you put it with anointing, suddenly you've got a com- combination that is unbeatable. I mean, there are some amazing singers in this world out there. They're recording artists, producing beautiful albums and piecing together some incredible music. But if you ask me, 
take an average singer with the anointing and it still will hands down beat that one with, the, with all the skill and no anointing. The anointing is just what brings us into the presence of God. It's what really touches the deepest part of our soul and changes and challenges us from the inside and just makes us like Christ. Fresh oil that's poured out from the platform that changes us like only God can. And so whether you're a musician, uh, whether you're a preacher like me, we've got to work on our skill and our art, but more important than any of that is the anointing. It's getting into the presence of God and being filled with the fullness of our living God so that when we come to minister and come to pour out and impart to others, that there's something upon our life that others will look at and say, the hand of the Lord. I sense the hand of the Lord. There's something on that person's life. And, and I don't quite get it. I don't quite understand what it is, but I, I know it's God. God's doing something through that person. That's what you and I want. That's what we need. That's why we dig deeper in Christ. That's why we grow. That's why we love the Lord. That's why we worship. That's why we draw in. That's why we push things aside. Because we want a fresh anointing. And it's going to break yokes and change our life. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, before we go on to the third point, let me just draw your attention one more thing. And that is that Sometimes when we talk about the anointing, there are some people out there that go, well, I've got an open heart, you know, but my open heart here is, is not for the real purpose of, purpose of the anointing. It's just for me. Some people want the fame or the glory of, I did a miracle. I healed the sick. I did this. I did that. And it's like the anointing's all about me and my fame and my, my ministry. No, the anointing was always given by God as the Spirit wills. It was given for the purpose of building the kingdom of God. So when we search for God, we're not anointing hunters, meaning God, fill me with power, fill me with glory. I, I declare Acts 1.8, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you'll be filled with power and glory. Yeah, you will, but the power isn't for your own fame. The power starts with the life-changing transformation on the inside. When the Holy Spirit comes in the inside of our life, power transforms us. And as it transforms us, it empowers us to be part of God's kingdom process of transforming others. That's the purpose of the anointing church. Remember this, when you receive fresh oil, the whole point of it is so that we can be as God is in the soul winning business. We can get out of our comfort zones and we can transform our workplaces and our schools and our homes and we can be environment changes. And, and it's a lot more fun being in the joy filled atmosphere of the anointing than in the struggle, pain, faithless, doubting filled atmospheres of people who live outside of the anointing. When you get around somebody who's walking in the anointing, joy lifts. It's beautiful. Why don't you be that person that truly changes your world because of the anointing on your life? And somebody said, Amen. You're, you're anointed and you're being anointed more and more as a soul winner. You're anointed with wisdom to speak the word of God. You're anointed with the truth. It's given to you. You're anointed with the knowledge of the Holy Spirit, with the wisdom that He puts inside daily of how to live your life and how to get out of your comfort zone. You're anointed with boldness and courage. You say, Pastor, I don't feel that. Do you know how? Um, you know how, how you can break through in this area? Take some steps. And when you take some steps, before you take some steps, you say, Lord, in Jesus' name, I know, I declare, I'm filled with the boldness and the courage that comes from your Holy Spirit. I know where you're leading me. I know what I ought to do. I'm stepping into it by the grace that's put upon me. Help me to know it. And when you take the steps, you remember Joshua at the Jordan River? It was when they stepped into the water that the waters part. Not before. You've got to take some steps first and then you start seeing it. That's when courage really rises up and you start seeing, oh my gosh, there's actually more in me than what I thought there was. Yeah, of course there is because you are anointed by God. There's more in you. You've been touched by God. You've been walking with this journey. You are filled. Now go and use and take what God has put on the inside of you and be filled more and more. Amen. In Acts 11:21 it says, And the hand of the Lord, that's the anointing, the hand of the Lord was with them. And a great number believed and turned to the Lord. I believe that's your testimony as well and mine in Jesus' name. Here's number three. Number three, allow God to lay His hand upon our lives. It's not only getting into His presence. It's not only opening up our heart to allow Him to do whatever. It's actually genuinely allowing God to position and place His hands on our life. That's an uncomfortable place. 
You know, I, 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 can, I can think about it even in a, in a church setting. You know, you've got to have a sense of humility, which, which we're about to speak a little bit about, um, for someone to lay their hands on you and impart something. It's kind of saying, well, you have something I don't have. I'm, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to receive it. And I'm going to receive it with all my heart. It's a humility place, place of humility. And um, allowing God to really put our hands his hands on our life is it's a beautiful thing there are there are times when god will put his hands on our life whether we want it or whether we don't want it and a, a good example of that was when we got saved you know most of us didn't come running into the church wanting god to anoint us and bless us and change our life we we were brought into the church god engineered the scenario to bring us into the house of the lord and to win our souls for jesus uh, but and the disciples were the same, right? They wouldn't have left their fishing boats if it weren't for the fact that Jesus first called them and said, come on, you go, come on, guys, I've got a bigger calling, a bigger plan for you. But a lot of times, after our initial experiences and encounters with God, He's expecting a maturity from the inside of us. He says, you know what? I, I'm a gentleman, and I will only lay my hands on you and only do what you really want me to do. That's why if we want a prophetic message from the Lord in a, in a place of prophetic ministry, you've got to want it. It's not that we, okay, you know, God, if you want to speak to me, you speak to me. No, we've actually got to get in the queue sometimes and, um, and allow God the opportunity to speak into our life. We've got to want it. Allow God to lay his hands on our life and open up our hearts for God to do what God wants to do and speak what God wants to speak. Amen? So... We really got to develop this openness. God, touch me with your spirit. We don't come to church just for, for fun or entertainment. God, touch me. Touch me with your spirit. God, draw me near. Draw me close. God, wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Fill me with your embrace. And pour out fresh oil and anointing over my life. I wonder how many times God has reached out his hands towards someone to do something in their life. But because of this, the, uh, the stubbornness and the hard-heartedness, it's kind of like he just hasn't quite gotten there and he's had to withdraw his hands. There are a couple of things that the laying on of hands from the Father, from the Anointed One, implies into our life. The first one is this. We must embrace a heart of humility and surrender. Embrace a heart of humility and surrender. When God's hands touch our hearts, they will melt the hardest heart, truly. If you've never experienced God's hands on your life, you need to. I mean, I know in my life, I have bawled my eyes out in those moments. I've been, I've had my, my stubbornness melted in those moments. I've, I've gone through some stuff when God's hands reach out and touch my life. And I know there are testimonies amongst us of the same. It's not, there's nothing like it. Absolutely nothing like it. We need to open up our life for it. Okay. It says in 1 Peter 5, 6, Therefore, humble yourselves God's not going to do it for us humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time there is an anointing he wants to pour out there is a process and a season and a journey he wants to take us on but we first must humble ourselves under the hand of God Lord touch me Lord anoint me Lord pour it out over my life hallelujah you don't know what God's hand will do neither do I you see this example in Revelation 1.17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last. God put his hand on John, the revelator here, and he poured out strength and empowered him. Just remember who I am. Know who I am. Here I am. The hand of God enlightened him and enlarged him and brought him up again. The hands of God have the power to create have the power to destroy, have the greatness and the anointing in them to raise up. The hands of God could do anything. These are the same hands that spun the whole universe into motion. The same hands that, that, that hold us in the palm of His hand. I mean, think about that. That God is so expansive that He's beyond everything that was ever created and exists in this natural realm and natural world, but so beautifully intimate and one that He holds each of us individually in the palm of His hands. Can you think of a time when God touched your life, when His hands rested upon your head and around you and embraced you? What did it feel like? 
What did it feel like? Sense it. Think about it. Close your eyes. Just think about it for a minute. What did it feel like? What did it, what, what happened on the inside of you? How did it change your thoughts? How did it revolutionize your life? Think about moments when, when the visitation just embraced you so fully and so completely. I mean, it is, there's nothing more beautiful, nothing, nothing more beautiful than being humble in the presence of God, humble under the mighty hand of God. What happened in that moment? What were your immediate feelings? What were your reactions when God touched you and God moved in your life? And what did you do about it? What, what steps did you take? What was your response? Beautiful, humble in the presence of God. And here's the second one, the last point for tonight, is embracing a willingness, or embrace a willingness to be transformed and changed. When the hand of the Lord comes on our life, we not only need to be humble, but we need to embrace that willingness. God, transform me, change me. Church is not about entertainment, although it is entertaining at times, and God can certainly put on a show sometimes. But it's not about that. That's not the primary purpose. The primary purpose is God wants to win this world, and He wants to change every one of us into His likeness. He wants to transform every child of God into the glory of God. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to lose our uniqueness. It doesn't mean our personality is going to change. God loves the uniqueness of who we are. He created us the way we are. But the character and the values and the mindsets and the, and the, the, um, you know, the methodology of how we do our life, that's what God will work on and transform. And we've got to be willing to let Him do that. You see, with every fresh anointing God pours out, He pours out an anointing and an invitation to say, come with me, come a little further. Come, come, and, come and grow with me because tomorrow's anointing and, and the day after that's anointing and where I really want to take you in the anointing is dependent on you following the pathway and the journey with me. It's when we get off the journey with God that people say, but God is so far away from me. We don't sense His anointing anymore. We can't hear His voice anymore because we've gotten far away and far off track from where God wanted us to be. When we remain on that path, and we continue walking with the Father and the Master hand in hand, that anointing leads us and guides us every step of the journey. Fresh oil, the daily bread. Man can't live by bread alone, he said, but by every word that proceeds, the daily anointing, the daily fresh revelation that God is pouring out. In Acts 13, 11, And now, indeed, the hand of the Lord is upon you, and you shall be blind, not seeing the day, the sun for a time, and immediately a dark mist fell on him, and he went around seeking someone to lead him by the hand. This scripture, which was spoken by Ananias to Saul just after that encounter on the road to Damascus, is not telling us the hand of the Lord is going to make you blind. Okay, Don't misinterpret the scriptures. Read it and understand it. You've got to understand Paul, or Saul, had been living his whole life in its entirety, saying, I know what I want to do, how I meant to live. I am going to do this because this is what I think is right. He was a Pharisee of the strictest sect. He knew what was right and he was a proud man and had it all worked out. He was so proud that he was going out there persecuting and killing the Christians, thinking that he knew the God of the Christians uh, better than the Christians knew the God of the Christians until he met the God of the Christians. And he suddenly realized, oh my gosh, I know nothing. And in this moment, the anointing or the hand of the Lord shows Saul, you know what? If you walk in your own path, in your own way, you're going to see nothing. You're going to be blind and dark and have your face dark. You, 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 you just can't work it out. He said, but trust in me. And in those couple of days, Saul had a good opportunity to think about his life and what he was going to do to allow that anointing to work inside of his heart. And when the hand of the Lord came on him again, a couple of days later, and those eyes were opened, the scales fell from his eyes, he began to see and walk and live in a journey, which we read in the scriptures today, of anointing to anointing to anointing to anointing. And I tell you, it stirs our heart till now. I love the books of the epistles of Paul the Apostle. Why? Because he was a man who knew God, who stood in his presence, who went up to the heavens and gazed on the glory of the Lord, who knew the depths of the scriptures, the heights of the scriptures, who just, who was just a, he had a beautiful revelation, beautiful experience of God, because every day he reached out for his fresh anointing, his fresh massage, his fresh encounter with the living God. Amen. Let me finish with this last scripture. Isaiah 10:27. It shall come to pass in that day, 
that his burden, that's yours and mine, will be taken away from your shoulder and the yoke or his yoke from your neck and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. What is there that you're going through in this period? I started with the scripture and I'm finishing with it. What is there right now in your life, on your life, in your mind, in your heart, surrounding you in the circumstances, the weight, the burden that you say, Lord, I need that yoke to be destroyed. I need that burden to be lifted. Well, why don't you reach out to the heavens right now and let's pray for fresh oil, fresh anointing, for a fresh massage in Jesus' name. Lord, we give you the glory, praise, and honor. And we thank you for the anointing oil that you personally, as the great anointer himself, are massaging into our life, deeply imparting into our world the strength that you're giving us, the power that you're releasing over us the glory that you're embracing us with so that we can be victorious over every one of these circumstances that we're walking through, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical, financial, the whole works, relational, social. Oh my gosh, Lord, we welcome you. We welcome you in all your power, all your glory, all your anointing to minister with fresh oil, fresh anointing oil in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah.